So now we get to the analysis stage. Students should have done all their experimentation, have all their data, and they're coming to this class with um, all their data ready. And I, I tell the students the date of this lesson, this first lesson, um, well in advance, so they know by now they have to have their data. So if they have to do it in their own time, um, so be it. But I want to make sure that when we begin looking at descriptive statistics, that everyone's ready to, to conduct their statistical tests. Um, so this is what we're looking at today. They should have one calculation of central tendency, that's your mean, median, or mode, and one of dispersion, range, standard deviation, etc. Um, they should have their raw data in a raw data in a table, so that's the, uh, what they use to collect their data, and their calculated descriptive statistics, um, also in a, in a table. Now that's not technically a requirement, but I like to have it because it's, it's kind of standard procedure. And they should have a paragraph summarizing the results. Seems basic, but there is a lot to do here. So here's a bit of chalk and talk. <clears throat> Um, this is just an example. They should have their data uh, in a raw data in a table that goes in their appendices, not in the body of their report, um, right? Anonymized, etc. So you know, for example, they might have had some um, handout or a questionnaire. They got you know thirty stacks of um, answer papers. They would just take one of those to include in their appendices and record all the data in a nice, neat table like this. They don't want to have every single photocopied or scanned result, individual result page of twenty pages in their report. Um, now, after that, they get into calculating their central tendency and dispersion. Unlike the old guide um, in the new curriculum, students don't need to explain their choices, but they do need to make sure that they're appropriate. Um, so they have the mean, median, or mode, um, and then they'll have the corresponding um, dispersion. Standard if mean, standard deviation if the median, the range, and if it's mode, into quartile range. Okay, um, and then this is this is surprisingly tricky for students uh, doing the summary and analysis. All they're just doing is writing out the results in, in sentence form. Um, and they summarize the differences in central tendency and in dispersion so that um, they're just sort of stating the results, but there might also be a bit of commentary, is here, commentary here as well. Uh, and I've, I've just put an example of this, all right? So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so here's an example uh, from Bransford and Johnson. This is quoted from the original. And again, I, I'm always surprised that the students do seem to struggle with this rather simple task and I think it's because a lot of them want to see uh, an effect they want to see a result and so even if it's you know 0.1% um, difference they get really excited like yeah yeah that group's higher and they they're you know overlooking the fact that come on that's 0.1% out of 100 you know uh, so anyway they, they just need to be writing down the results but also having somewhat of an interpretation like was it a, was it a big difference is it a small difference um, was one group really spread out were there lots of outliers so they summarize the results but with also maybe uh, a little bit of analysis there as well and so here are things, um, some things for them to avoid. You can go over, and this last one is what, what we see all the time. Drawing and it was what I was just talking about. Drawing strong conclusions from weak results. Okay. Um, you'll also find students, if they don't get the results they, they wanted, or the results that replicate the original, they get really disappointed. And that's a really good way to teach about researcher bias, right? They, they had this desire to get these results, and they were disappointed. And so then how might that have affected their design of the experiment? Um, so and then we just check in so hopefully by the end of the lesson they've got this stuff right it should be pretty straightforward but um, yeah students sometimes struggle with it um, yep so homework and then the next lesson we're getting to taking that and putting it into a graph